As a lot of you may already know, I've been enjoying Chasm a lot and the freedom that it provides to me from work to work wherever I want to work. Well, within Jeff, there's still some restraints with some software that I've been working through, but I've been enjoying Chasm. One of the problems that I've been having, though, with Chasm is I would like to be able to use SSH to mount to some of my development containers. So I kind of run things like Nginx or um, React.js inside of Docker images on a server, and the directories are mounted out to the server directory so I can live edit and then refresh the page as I've been doing some of my web development classes. Well, I've not been focusing on them much lately. I've been doing a lot more here on YouTube, but I hope to get back into them. And this was one nuisance that was causing me to make excuses not to do that. So I spent some time today and over the last actual couple of days, and I figured out how to set Chasm up and get Chasm working with sudo and install my own custom applications in Chasm because the Ubuntu focal desktop that's provided with Chasm doesn't have SSH FD on it, nor does it have the ability to use sudo to install something? Not that I want to install it every single time I log in, because remember, the instance gets destroyed. But let's head over to the mess that is my normal desktop and take a look at some things. So here's my wonderful messy desktop here, and here's Chasm. And you can see that we have Firefox up here and Sublime up here, and we also have a terminal edit available. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about actually creating the SSH. HFD mount that I talked about, which was the reason for doing this project, but I do want to show you that sudo is working. And I'm just going to do, I'm going to do that by running a command sudo apt update, and we're asked for a chasm username. We can enter the one that we set up when we built our file, and it runs. And we can furthermore show you by running the upgrade. Now, Note that this isn't the greatest way to run the update and upgrade for a container like this because when we destroy this container, when we exit out and close this, this is all gone. It's completely destroyed and returned back to stock. That's the beauty of Chasm, and especially um, for security reasons and stuff. Now, we're we're kind of mitigating that, especially if we're exposing our Chasm to the web um, for some of that security doing this. And you should note that. I mean, I might not use something like Cloudflare Tunnels to expose this and depend solely on my login. I might use only a VM if I had something like this. I... I, I, I work with a VM anyways, uh, but it's just suggestions that I'm thinking about kind of out loud. So we can go ahead and we can delete this environment now that you saw everything was working. And let's head over here to our Docker file, which if you follow some of the Chasm directions, it, it's going to get confusing. And they tell you to go here to uh, GitHub to get this. And this is for the focal desktop. And I also found most of this particular Docker file I couldn't get to run. I even tried upgrading to version 1.13 and version 1.12, where most of this documentation was written. So I tried multiple different versions. I tried different types of installs. So I did a 1.13 install. I did a 1.12 install and then upgraded to 1.13. Um, I tried it in 1.12. I tried it in 1.13. I tried it after the upgrade. Like I just tried all kinds of different things to get this to, these files to work. And these copied files that we're copying in, I couldn't seem to get to work in any way. So unfortunately, that meant I had to go off and kind of create what I wanted in a little bit more of a custom manner. And I say unfortunately because I kind of just wanted to use the Ubuntu image with the baked in web browsers and stuff. So I had it, but um, I could go off, I could create what I wanted. So in doing that, I copied kind of the file in and I gutted the file. So I completely removed almost everything out of the file. And I hope that you guys are able to see this all right. 
right here. I am uh, just noticing that I don't have it full screen. So I hope you can see it all right, um, because you're going to kind of have to look through the screen. I don't think I'm going to post a lot of these notes, but there are a few things we want to pay attention to. So here is the line where I installed the, SA, the SSH FS that I spoke about, and I did have to install sudo. And I did find that I had to run in, in between each run command the app get update and then run the app get install. I also found I had problems running the just a straight apt command as I was doing this inside Docker because we're actually going to be building a Docker image here. And then I had to do some cleanup work by removing the extra files. Now, um, later on, I found that I didn't necessarily have to do that cleanup. I left it there. So here, the next set of lines here, you can see that I'm actually installing Sublime Text Editor. And then I go on down here to install Firefox so that I have a web browser. And then now we come back to part of the sudo set it up here where I have to tell, and we determined that my username was Chasm user by this information information that I stole from down here from the GitHub file. So if we look down here in the GitHub file, we kind of have some configuration stuff that ends for the user in the home directory. And I just stole that information and pasted it here. So we know our username's chasm user. So I need to assign sudo rights by putting giving the chasm user to the sudo group. So we do that with the user mad dash a, little a big g sudo and then the username, which is chasm user. But I also then found that I had to set a password and this slowed me down quite a bit. I ended up having to use chat GPT to find the answer here. But in order to set the password, which we have to set the password when we build the container, we are going to run the command run echo and then we're going to put in single quotes chasm user, the username, and then colon and the password. And then we're going to run chpasswd. Now, I'm not entirely sure the difference between passwd and the ca, um, but that worked. It didn't work when I ran the pa the uh, passwd command that we're normally familiar with. So that's what I did end up getting this running and I can save this here and just so you see this file works because we do have a fair amount of skeptics from time to time we're going to push this file up to the server and so now it's up on our server and let's go ahead and build it which I also wanted to show you how to do so you know there's that so here's the server now you can see the couple of builds I did here testing and some of the problems I had as I was doing some work. Uh, here's the particular one coming back from the GitHub. But anyways, so the command to build this is going to be a little bit different. And it's got to do with how you actually have to somewhat interact with Chasm in here. So we actually need to assign a version. So, you know, normally when we do a lot of our Docker builds, we'll just do Docker build dash T name dash F Docker file space period, and it'll spit out an image for us. Well, we actually have to give it a name and a version number in order for Chasm to accept it. And I'll show you how I set Chasm up here in a minute, but we have to build the file. So the command that I'm using today is sudo docker build because chasm doesn't apply docker of uh, the docker group to the user by default. So we have to use sudo. I probably could have gone in and done this, but I kind of just left it alone. Um, so we have docker sudo docker build dash t. And then I put the Ubuntu focal desktop, which is what I was basically the image that I was bringing in to build this from this file and the components that I stole from the original Docker file, you know, all this stuff up here, some of the environment variables and so on and so forth. Then I put the colon and I called mine SSHFD Ubuntu. And then, of course, I added the dash F. Docker file period, and we're inside the, S the SHFD Ubuntu folder that I created just to house this Docker file. You know, pretty standard Docker stuff. 
if you're familiar with Docker. We can go ahead and build this. All right, so now we have it built. Now, the way I set this up in Chasm is I went to my administration panel and I went to workspaces. Now, I kind of cheated and I found my Ubuntu Focal right here. And you can see that with my version number starting here at the end, that that is indeed the file. But the other way you can do it is, well, if we go back, I'll show you, is we can click Add Workspaces. And then from our workspaces up here, we can choose Container. And I have my registry entries installed, so I can just start typing chasm and then web. We'll hit the slash and then Ubuntu. And all of our different Ubuntu versions come up here. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to choose the focal desktop 1.1. Three, and you can notice everything else fills in here. Now, I like to select this to share. It's, I don't have a lot of resources, so I kind of want to share them if I get doing multiple things. But then we have right here the Ubuntu Focal. This is the actual image. Now, we don't want to use Chasm Web. So we're going to delete that, and we're also going to delete the version name. Now, if we come back to our system that we built our image on, we we know from our file what it created, but I want to go ahead and show you. We can run a sudo docker ps, and that's going to go ahead and fit out all the different images that are actually on our or that are running, sorry, we actually want to run a sudo docker images, and this will spit out all the different images that are on our system, and you can see all the different Chasm web ones, and then you can see this Ubuntu focal desktop with the tag, the SSHFD Ubuntu. So we can grab this tag here, and we can move over, and we can paste the tag in. And now we're actually able to save this, and notice we don't have persistent storage set up or anything. If we wanted to, we could set up persistent storage. Um, and if you did notice, I put a folder inside of my the home folder called Ubuntu Focal, and then I specified it to username. Now, this username doesn't specify that Chasm user uh, name that comes from Adam, you know, that right here, it actually specifies and creates this instance for your username, which in my case here is administrator, and you can see our other users here, we'll show you in a second. But we're going to hit submit, and now that file is being created. If you wanted to see your users, you can see my users. I have one user admin and EE here, just as I've created them. So we can head to workspaces and notice we now have two Ubuntu in instances. Well, we can't really tell them apart, so we need to head back to our workspaces. And again, it'll be hard to tell them apart. Um, let's just choose one. They're both going to be the same because we overwrote our image from prior, and we're going to hit edit. And now here where it says friendly name, we can put this as SSHFD and go ahead and hit submit this time. So this time when we head to workspaces, we notice one now is called Ubuntu Focal SSHFD. And you can see that I actually chose the wrong one here. And just for the sake of because I chose the wrong one here, I'm actually going to end this. And I'm going to go back and run the one you guys saw me run. So we'll go back to admin workspaces and we'll go back in here we're going to edit it and we'll delete out the name we'll save it and we'll go to the top one we'll go edit we can come down here we'll see there's the persistent storage that we put in that we spoke about and now we can come back up here and we'll call this ssh fd and we can submit it and go to workspaces now seeing the ssh fd and the ubuntu focal but when we run it we notice when we asked for persistent storage we created the persistent storage and we also had to do some group settings and i showed you that on the main install of getting this set up um, so we're going to launch the session here, and here's the Docker image all set up. You'll notice because of the way we pulled it in, there's all kinds of files. They don't necessarily work. We just have the Firefox and the Sublime. So you can go ahead and kind of delete out. Now, because we set up persistent storage, they should no longer be there. And then we can come up here. You can see we don't have a lot of stuff installed, just the bare minimum. And let's go ahead, open up the terminal, and show you that our sudo 
works. So we'll start out by the sudo apt update, enter the password we set up, and it runs. And we'll go ahead and just run that upgrade so you can see that status as well. And there's your upgrade starting. So there you have it. There's how to build a custom uh, chasm image and get sudo working so that you could work with this with tools like SSHFD. So you could mount images and work remotely. So one of the advantages of this is if you had a VPN connection and an iPad with a mouse and keyboard, well, I guess you don't even need the mouse and keyboard, but I'd suggest it, that had a cellular data connection, you can work anywhere basically in the world from your server through an internet connection, assuming that you have enough internet connection to stream this. But Chasm has a lot of adjustability, so we can, especially for doing like web development and work like that, we can actually go in and we can configure some of these settings. And I'm thinking I'm seeing stream quality. I'm set at the middle, but I can turn this down. And if I turn it down, I do lose like some resolution, but it, it's not horrible. It's still very workable of an environment the way Chasm set up. So with that, I'm going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it's able to expand the horizons of your work with Chasm. I've been working with Chasm now for, I guess, a week, maybe two weeks, and I'm definitely enjoying a lot of the freedom it brings me, both from working just down the road from my iPad and working from my laptop at areas like our pool. So I can go out, sit in the sun, work in the backyard, work at the pool here at the condo community, and have all of the advantages and power of my server. The only thing that had been struggling was I was having a hard time communicating with my servers. I'd have to do an SSH connection or an SCP connection, build my files, keep them on my desktop, and push them off and so forth and I mean it worked we were able to do it we were able to communicate with stuff and I've been working in that way for a long time as I said I was getting annoyed with some classwork and I wanted to change that so I wanted to start using SSHFD um, but here you go there's how to build the custom image, how I set my custom image up to make this happen with Chasm. And I think we'll have another video coming out about how to install and use SSHD, at least on a couple different operating systems. I know Mac, we're definitely going to look at it on Linux. And I do have a Windows computer now that's left over from my wife's work where we'll be able to do that. So I'm expecting later this week to release that video for you. Anyways, have a good night.